I lost a lot of faith in, in people and in dreaming and in aspirations. Becoming very apparent that there was something wrong. Uh, it was really scary how I didn't know what the problem was because the, the impending doom that I felt happening to my life, the out of controlness of it was, the unmanageability seemed much bigger than a drink of alcohol. As I look back now, I realize that I was an addict um, long before I ever had drink, first drink, or use drugs at all. Um, the behavior that meth led me to do is just in, uh, unacceptable for any person of a society. It took me about six months to, to destroy and push away everybody in my life um, and get down to absolutely um, what I was, was just a person and had lost everything. I don't know if I had lost it as much as I was trying to destroy it to figure out what was the root of my problems. And the root of my problems was, you know, addiction. And so that was, uh, the only way I was able to get off meth was by getting arrested and going to jail. I couldn't do it on my own. I tried. And so I uh, got out of jail and um, realized that, you know, I, I needed help when I got out seriously. So I went to a residential rehab and they introduced me to like recovery. And, and that was the first place I had been to in a long time where I felt safe, like understood that I was around um, people that could help me with what, they knew how I thought, they knew what I felt, and they knew the guilt and the shame that I had and uh, the regret and like the feelings that go with losing everything and you're the only person responsible for it. So I moved back here uh, two years ago and that was originally to try to get off of methadone. Um, I knew I was going to be super sick, I needed a detox, I wasn't able to quit on my own. And so my mom had moved out temporarily and said I could stay here and just um, endure it, kind of. And so I knew there wouldn't be any stress. And I just, it was about like 30 days where I just didn't sleep, wasn't eating, and then finally started using meth again because it was the only thing that, um, that would make me feel better. So. Uh, um, so, I don't know, it's just kind of like a weird, like, it's kind of like a sad, like, feeling that accompanies, like, coming back home sometimes. Like, one, there's, like, you're just really misused, or you just have, like, really uncomfortable feelings. Like, cancer was, like, in the front room, I remember having Christmas and, like, like a barf bucket. <laughs> like, I was sick, like, I was just really sick, and I couldn't engage in family things. Like, we had the whole family over here for dinner, and I was, like, in, in the room sleeping, sick, alone, like, more concerned that I was a bigger problem. Like, I was very alone, like, it, and it just, it just was a bad feeling, like, it just, it was painful. Um, I also, like, remember, like, a lot of recovery in this house, like, learning how to, like, run again after I got sick. I, like, go up and down the hallways, and I could see, like, I got stronger, and I'm just, like, that's just where I started. Um, and then the same thing, like when I was detoxing from methadone, like it was, it was really bad. Like I, it was, it reminded me of having cancer again. I was that weak, I was that depressed, I was that like just, and then even using again, like that was kind of, it was kind of like my comfort for being here. But when I come back now and like see some of my things in the closet still and like see like, kind of like little traces of the destruction that I kind of, still haven't, you know, it affects your family. Like, my mom's not here right now, but this was her house. <laughs> like, and, uh, like, a lot of this mess still is from, like, from my addiction and, like, things that I haven't been able to, to entirely fix. I got involved in street soccer because I ended up at, um, at a homeless transitional employment program with the uh, Volunteers of America. And uh, my case manager had heard about the street soccer tournament organization the year prior by watching like a documentary on ESPN called Kicking It. 
and he went, found out how to sign up a team. And so they went the year before I got to this transitional living. And then when I got there, um, he really wanted to go again because it was just like a really great experience for him his first year. And they had only taken men before. But when I got to um, the Mather Community Campus, he got a lot of my background and found out that I had like a significant amount of soccer in my background and kind of sought me out and uh, asked me to play. Told me about it, but I didn't understand the concept of it. Like I had no idea what to expect. And then all the people that were playing were like, oh, it was like this great experience. And, but they had like no idea about soccer. And so they kept saying, it's like, we didn't even know how to play. We just went out there and we just, we just played and we won this award. And I was like, I don't understand what you guys are talking about, but okay. So um, I went out and practiced with them. And the first day that we went out and played, like I just, I really enjoyed it. But I, I told them no initially. I told them I didn't want to play. But the, um, the first day we went out and played was like, I enjoyed it. And I hadn't really enjoyed anything that much since I had been sober. I was grateful for being sober and grateful for the things I had but it kind of like reminded me that I had once enjoyed things in my life and that was one of the big things of it so I went and it was really cool so we're out here in San Francisco at USF to um, play in the street soccer USA's for their homeless street soccer team uh, play day type fundraiser five on five tournament spawn the beginning of building relationships so it helps uh, it helps us to be able to play together because you know you can't play soccer by yourself obviously the better you know your teammates the better you can play I do it I've been in a leadership position before uh, with soccer and I wasn't really I was, number one I didn't want the responsibility because um, I think I knew I wasn't being a very good leader but people followed me in that direction anyways. And so this opportunity has, um, one, given me a chance to feel like I uh, can't make up for things that have already happened, but prove that, that I don't want to do that again. And the way I can show that is by leading people into a more positive direction and not asking for anything back. The roll, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot it. Oh, Lucas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot it, shoot it. Shoot it. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'm a student at Mather Community Campus. Um, I am in recovery and continue to stay clean and sober and work my program with a sponsor and working the steps. Um, I joined the team immediately when I got to Mather. I played soccer as a young child and when I heard about the team, I um, further investigated that and decided that was something I'd want to be a part of. Um, I think Lisa is a great role model for us. I think she's an outstanding soccer player and the fact that she uh, is in recovery and a student at Mather, I think it exemplifies what is possible for us if we're willing to do the cookie cutter program that is outlined at Mather. But uh, as far as just soccer in itself, um, for being an inspiration, she's an outstanding player. I got hooked on soccer when I first seen my kids play. Um, they've been playing, for, like I said, for like four years, and I was always in my addiction, and uh, I barely made it. I barely made it to any of their games. And when I got clean and I started going to see their games, they were just so good on the field and they have skill, and I just love watching them play. And I said hey, maybe I could do that, you know. And here I am. My kids see that I'm. I set out to do something and. That I'm not, I wasn't very good, and now I'm getting a little bit better, and I'm sticking with it. So it shows the commitment, and just that I'm not willing to give up. Okay, I think it's six v six in indoor. We had like eleven v eleven, and Lisa and her kids were out there too. And um, like Lisa, Ida, they had an assist together. Like she passed it to her daughter, and her daughter scored. It's just like that's like that's cool. You know, when I first got asked to play soccer, like, that was my reservation. I've always been, like, a standout player. Like, I, just, I didn't want to do it again. I was like, I don't, I don't want to be in the front. Like, but I felt like that before I knew I had anything real to offer. Because I was still learning a lot about myself and, like, my self-worth and value. And I didn't realize that there might be strength behind my story or hope for it. 
Um, Because I was still pretty embarrassed by, like, how I had dealt with my life and um, where I'd ended up from making bad decisions. But, like, it just kind of happened. And it was, like, one day it's, like, all right, well, you're the face for it. Are you ready? And I had to think about it. But it would be so selfish to have said no. It's really not a huge surprise that she went back to Sacramento and people have flocked to her and um, other women have been inspired to kind of follow in her footsteps. And so we've seen, um, you know, as they call it, the movement in Sacramento get underway. There is life after homelessness and alcohol and drugs and we're playing for change. Thank you.